Canada legalized cannabis in 2018, and one of the goals of legalization was to take the proceeds out of the hands of organized crime. So, three years later, has it worked? For more on that, we're going to turn to Detective Inspector Jim Walker with the OPP Organized Crime Reduction Bureau. Good morning to you. Good morning. So, yeah, has it worked? What is the split right now between people who buy weed legally and illegally? Um, so, the, what we're seeing right now is uh, uh, and it's a positive thing is that more and more people are shifting their, uh, their consumption to the legal market. Um, from the onset, our, our mandate in the Organized Crime Enforcement Bureau uh, was to lead a provincial joint forces cannabis enforcement team. Um, and our primary focus at the beginning was to get uh, close the illegal storefronts here in Ontario. We did a very good job of that. What we did see was a, uh, a shift to the online space. And then we turned our focus uh, to the illegal supply. And that's what you're seeing there in the background now mm -hmm. is uh, our team is primarily focused right now on the illegal supply here in Ontario. Yeah, I want to ask you about the online presence of that. You've said there are about, what, a thousand online places to get cannabis online. I'm just talking about Ontario. How does the OPP tackle the virtual market? Um, we, we tackle the virtual market. We do a lot of uh, intelligence gathering right now. And on any, any given day, um, there's roughly over 1,000 illegal online providers. And what the public needs to know is that uh, when we've been seizing this illegal cannabis, we've been actually having it independently tested. And um, what's, what's interesting is it's coming back, obviously, laced with uh, pesticides and other contaminants, but actually some of the THC level that's being advertised by the illegal providers is actually lower, so the, the consumer is actually getting ripped off. So how we're tackling that is we're going after the illegal supply, cutting it off right from where it's being grown and provided. I think you're touching on this a little bit, but somebody who says, you know, I already have a guy, I've been getting my weed that way for years. What would you say to them? Like, what concerns do you have about that approach? Again, I, I go back to the to how do you know what is in that product more and more as the, the testing's coming back. Um, like I said, we're finding illegal contaminants. Um, the THC level is is not always um, adver as advertised, and ultimately, um, a lot of this money, a great deal of it, is ending up in the pockets of organized crime. Um, we're we finding now uh, there isn't one or very few organized crime projects that we're doing that uh, we're not finding a legal cannabis component because it's seen as lower risk for the criminals, um, but very high uh, economic reward. It's a, a significant revenue generator for them. Next month, Canada's cannabis legislation is up for review. So what would you like to see change going forward? Right now, um, our primary focus, is, again, has been on the production and the illegal production. We've seen a, a very big spike in Ontario um, of individuals uh, using the Health Canada personal medical uh, designations um, and using that to, um, to grow significant amounts of illegal cannabis. So a lot of our focus has been highlighting the, the, the loopholes in that legislation and, uh, and, and where, where we can do better. Um, legally or legislatively um, on shoring up those loopholes. Organized crime, if there's any type of gray area in the legislation, organized crime will exploit that. Detective Inspector Walker, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.